from uh, Gandic University of Physical Education and Sports, Poland. Uh, another institution is also Professional Standard Committee Europe active. The presentation of Anna is International Initiative for the Educational Standard and Professional Qualifications in the Active Labor Sector, the European Qualification Framework approach. Now, let's invite Anna begin her presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to share the screen. All right. All right. I'm going to share a few information on uh, international initiatives based on pan-European concept. The European Qualification Framework is a tool developed by the European Commission to compare and to transfer various qualifications uh, between countries and also uh, across industries, across sectors, and between higher and vocational education. According to a document published in 2008, we have EQF and it was updated in 2017. European Qualification Framework has, has eight levels and each member state was supposed to deliver its own qualification frameworks and the levels can be different. So you can have five or even 11, 11 levels. So I'm not going to describe these tables in details, but I would like you to know that all levels are described as knowledge skills, as respons responsibility and autonomy. So uh, in each level, you can see what a person should know, should be able to do. And as you will look at it more detailly, so you will see that these descriptors are very general. Sometimes we say that these descriptors are blank. Therefore, we have to deliver, we have to develop sector qualification framework, which use uh, more specific more, more specific descriptors which respond to the specificity of a special industry and i'm going to present you the outcomes of one of our international projects uh CCAP project which was financed by uh, erasmus plus program it was coordinated by europe active it is a big organization umbrella non-profit organization representing fitness sector in europe this is a huge sector with a revenue of, 80, of 28 million annually and with 64,000 facilities with 64 million customers. With a social partners, the European Confederation of Outdoor Employers, we created, according to Council Decla Declaration, we created the Active Leisure Sector Skills Alliance and therefore we are we are having more audience. We are the sector who combines fitness and also outdoors. So that means that we have also uh, instructors of skiing, kayaking, and also hiking, climbing, and everything what is going on outdoors. And with our experts, we have uh, identified some examples of professional tasks. So as you can see on level two, you can you, you have someone who can assist in the delivery of active leisure activities. On level three, you have someone who is able to independently plan and uh, conduct exercise sessions. On level four, which can be personal trainer, for example, you have someone who is ready to implement long-term exercise program. On level five, someone is ready to work with special population with specific requirements. And on level six, we have graduated exercise specialists who are ready not only to design and implement exercise programs, but also to evaluate them and to develop some guidelines how to do that. You will find more information in our final report, the final report of CCAF project. I'm deputy director of the special council, special commission for uh, standards development. And we already have a few standards, as you can see from level two to level six. And what is the main benefit of our work is that uh, 
everyone who was educated according to the educational standards can be registered in the European Register of Exercise Professionals. And thanks to this, he or she can be found easily on a European market, or I can say even on a global market. And what is more, we respond very quickly to the market needs. So we are creating a lifelong learning qualification for special populations. For example, how to work with children, with youth, with pregnant and postpartum women and with seniors. And nowadays more and more interest is gained to so-called clinical qualifications. And we are preparing people to work with um, patient in or after cancer, exercise after stroke. And as a response to the COVID pandemic, we have created the COVID-19 Standards and Skills Task Force. And our main outcome uh, was to, to create a special qualification. And we have 11 experts now from nine countries. This qualification was, um, was something that we wanted to give our exercise professionals. Some of them were really horrified after the lockdown and they were not able to provide their services. So this is a uh, document who can give them special skills how to provide fitness services entirely online if necessary. We are still waiting for opinions. So if you'd like to share your opinions on this document, so please do that. Uh, we are waiting for the opinions until November the 27th. So this is open, open consultation process. And how can we combine all these initiatives to the education of physical education teachers? I'm going to give you a few words uh, how we are doing this uh, in my university. I'm uh, a, an associate professor at Gdańsk University of Physical Education and Sport, Poland. And this is the largest university, sport university in the northern Poland with five fields of study. And we assume that the professional development of our students can start long before entering our university. So you can have some experience in your early childhood. For example, you are an athlete and you can gain some professional competences that will be useful for your later career. So you can have a qualification of sport assistant or sport animator at the age of 16 in most European countries. Or at the age of 18, you can be sport instructor. And when you are entering the study, you can also have some extra qualification in your curricula before you will graduate as a physical education teacher. We know that students gather all these qualifications, they have a lot of certificates, and we want to recognize all this prior learning. So therefore we use some systems to transfer the credits and to transfer the learning outcomes. So ECTS is a system that we use for higher education. ECVET is typical for vocational education and training. And in the last project, my university coordinated an important task, how to develop recommendation, how to transfer ECVET and ECTS credits between, between the systems and between qualifications. And ending my presentation, I would like to emphasize that all these in initiatives, international initiatives are taken to make this uh, education more flexible and attractive for students. And we hope that thanks to these activities, we will have more credible professionals in the sport and physical activity sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thanks for your presentation, Anna. Your presentation.